Hello, hello, good morning, and welcome to Christ Fellowship Everywhere. I don't know what the weather is where you are, <laughs> but the weather where we Ooh. are is exceptional. It's going to be a great day in church. My name is Tyler with my friend Daniel here, and we're excited you're with us this morning. That's right. There's a few perks to living in South Florida. Every once in a while, it feels like this. Another perk of living yeah. here is this church called Christ Fellowship. Yeah. We're baptizing people from yeah. last service that as service got out, people are coming out side and they're getting dunked in the tank, baptizing, symbolizing their life and their new life in Christ. And so it's a beautiful day. It's incredible to be here. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for being at church. We we always like to say, show up. You you did that. So uh, say hello. We have some people in the chat. want to say hello to Rick in West Palm Beach. Hello to you, Cameron up in Port St. Lucie. Great to have you here with us. And so go ahead and take a second. Say hi in the chat. And if you need something to say in the chat, if you need a prompt, just say happy birthday to Steven, Steven. who's behind the camera. It, it was his birthday yesterday. 25. S-T-E-P-H-E-N. And then we have a special guest with hey. us today. Hey, hey best of It's you guys. great to have you here with us. Incredible message. Thank you. I'm excited. It's a great day. Man, when truth gets revealed, Jesus gets revealed. Yeah. And on. to have an encounter with Jesus, to have an encounter with truth. So... Yeah. We're going to have an encounter with Jesus and truth today. It's going to be great. tell us about these baptisms. Right oh, here. man, so excited to see people taking a public uh, just confession of faith and declaration. And somebody asked me, hey, can I get baptized um, more than once? And I'm like, well, yeah, <laughs> baptism is a testimony. And so what you're doing is you're you're giving your testimony. You're saying, you know, I'm, I'm living for Jesus. And for some people, you know, they were baptized as a kid or maybe as a teenager and a lot of life has passed and they're ready to maybe make that declaration all over again. So Come I'm going to go check it out. Good you guys. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Pastor Todd, for jumping in there. It's incredible to hear about the life change yep. and when people get to tell their story yep. about how they've come to know Jesus, yep. the difference that he's made in their life. Yep. It, you see groups of family and friends around yep. here all cheering for them as they're getting baptized. Yep. And and that's really where that story, that testimony comes yep. out. And I want everyone to yep. know that I, I live for Jesus yep. and I'm not afraid of that. I'm yep. not ashamed of it. Yep. And, and that's what baptism gets to do. And we have a story. Easter was incredible last week. You'll hear some things uh, this service, but we have a story from from Easter last week. That's right. So our Boca campus, all right. Uh, Hannah, our kids pastor down there was telling us in staff meeting this week, she met two kids as they checked in for the Saturday night Easter service. And she met them and and their names were a little a little different, a little unique. And it was kind of like, hmm, maybe you're not from here. And uh, sure enough, they they are in town visiting family from Norway. And so she's like, oh, this is great. Great to have you here. Kids, the boys, twin boys, love and worship. They're just really into it. At the end, when they ask, and I love how our kids ministry asks this, uh, do you want Jesus to be your uh, forgiver, friend, and, leader. What's the, and leader of your life? And their hands just shot up. They were both like, absolutely, that's what I want. So they got to pray with them and explain that, what it means uh, yeah. to, to follow Jesus that way. And then uh, after that night, the whole team in Boca is all connecting, all praying together, sharing some stories. And they were like, oh, in service tonight, there was a, a gentleman that came forward yeah. and gave his life to Jesus. He was from Norway. Well, sure enough, it was the boy's dad. Come they on. were in separate rooms, both experiencing the love of Jesus. They yeah. all give their life to Jesus. And so I don't know if they're watching, but if you're watching and maybe all our viewership in Norway. Norway is going to increase, hey, we want to be able to connect with you. We want to be able to help make sense of that and walk with you and, and be your church family yeah. halfway around the world. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, really cool to see how God was working. Yeah, come on. But today we're jumping into a new series called Tug of War. Uh, I used to go to camps and play Tug of War all the time. Yeah. I love it. But really it's a series on relationships. So yeah. Let's talk you know, about it. think about where we learn most of our relationships, kind of how we learn how to deal with people, normally comes from family. It does. Right? And there was a, a hashtag that went viral, viral uh, a little while ago called hashtag my family is weird. <laughs> Okay, so we thought we'd go to the internet, we'd pull some uh, some wisdom. Not your family. <laughs> not your your family yeah, is totally family. normal. My family is not normal at all. Uh, so this is what Danny Michelle says. When I was learning to parallel park, my dad used my sisters and brothers as traffic cones. Hashtag my family is weird. Efficient. I kind of like this because <laughs> you're gonna learn how to park. Yeah. You're, you're gonna learn to take care of that automobile yeah. and how to take care of some cars around you because you don't actually want to. Hopefully, you don't want to. So the lesson is like, 
Be um, careful. Be careful. Be careful. Treat that like that. You know, you got real people around yeah, you. Yeah. All right. It's great. Uh, let's do one more. So I, I once heard my grandparents giggling upstairs when I walked past the room. I saw them wearing each other's dentures. Hashtag my family yeah. is weird. Was that like on accident? <laughs> like, oh, I, I didn't realize that was like, yours. Like, oh, we made a mistake. Or maybe they were sharing. So maybe that's a lesson on sharing. Sharing is caring. We, yeah. <laughs> that's how you take care. You're like, oh, you, you need my teeth? There you yeah. go. I'm yeah. willing to give and sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. So Come on. I don't know. We got a great service Come on. for you We're today, having though. fun today. Uh, we're grateful that you're with us. Like I said, baptisms is behind us. And even in service day, you're going to see people get dunked, go under. That's symbolizing the new life they're experiencing yeah. in Christ. And if you haven't been baptized, get to a local campus. Uh, it's your next step in faith. But we're about to jump into worship today. Yeah. So when you grab your Bible, you want to get your praise hands, let's get ready and join the worship center Welcome with Pastor Jesus. Church. Welcome to Christ Fellowship. It is so good to be in the house of God. I got to welcome everyone joining us online and here at Palm Beach Gardens. And especially if you're new today, hey, we pray that this service is a gift to you. Now we are just living, coming out of this season of Easter. And here's what we know, our God, He's still alive and well, amen? And our God, He's not done with His church yet. And so here's what I know, this Old Testament verse stands true today, that the God that is for us, He's far greater than anyone or anything that could come against us today, amen? Amen, knowing that Jesus, He speaks for you today, and He speaks a better word, amen? So come on, let's fill this room with worship today. Let's fill this room with this room with praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, open your mouth with me today. Let's sing together. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory.
So Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise. You're worthy to be praised, Lord. of life no one but Jesus and today you just want to tell your people they will never walk alone they will never be alone you will never be alone church you will never be alone there's no one else you will never be alone there is no other name but the name that is Jesus he who was and still is and will be through it all All the things unseen and this reckoning I know I will never be alone I know I know I will never be alone I know I will never be alone There will be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas 
the reminder that Jesus is with us in the struggles, in the trials, and in the fires of life. Now, what I know today is there might be someone who's walked into this place and maybe your, your biblical knowledge of, of all the faithfulness of God, especially in the Old Testament, it might be uh, uncertain to you or you might never have heard the story that we're singing about today. And so you're like, another in the fire? What, what does that mean? And even if you did grow up in church today, sometimes the best lessons we ever learned were in kids' church, all right? And we need to be reminded of that faithful lesson those three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that because they wouldn't bow to the evil king, Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar would have those three Hebrew boys sentenced to death, death in a fire. And so he asked that the furnace would actually be heated 10 times hotter. It says that even the soldiers who placed those three Hebrew boys into the fire, that they themselves died. And as the king stepped back and looked upon in anticipation of those three Hebrew boys being burnt in a fire, he looks to his attendant and he says, hey, did, didn't we throw three guys into the fire? Because there's a fourth man in the fire and he looks like the son of God. <laughs> and just as Jesus appeared in that fire with those three Hebrew boys, thousands of years ago. Today, he appears to walk with you, beside you in anything that you are facing today. Whatever any doctor said, whatever any coworker said, whatever struggle you're facing in your life today, that Jesus is with you. He is with you. In John 16, he says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. This is who Jesus is. He is with us and he embattles with us. And I know Stephen led us through a moment of prayer today, but I just think one more time today, if you're in a battle, if you're in a fire, if you're in a struggle and in a trial, would you like me today, just raise your hands across this room and say, God, I trust you. I trust that Jesus is with me, that he is beside me. And so God today with open hands, we remind ourselves that there is another who is with us and his name is Jesus. And we know that in this world, there will be struggle, there will be trial, there will be temptation, there will be sickness. But we serve a God who promises to go with us, who comes before us, who walks beside us, who fills us with his spirit. And so we trust in your presence today and we trust that you will guide and you will lead. And though the rivers, they rage around us, we will not be drowned. And though the waters, they begin to rise, we will not be overcome. And the fires, they will never burn us. We will never be alone because you are with us. So come on church, let's sing it. Get it in our hearts, get it in our spirits today. You'll never be alone. Yeah. I know And it's good to be together in this room today and worshiping with us at Christ Fellowship everywhere. Those of you that are tuning in, special greeting to all the men and women in the United States Armed Forces that might be worshiping with us today at home or abroad. So grateful to have you. So if you're in this room today, before you're seated, just tell somebody next to you, he's with you. Bob, he's with you. Patty, he's with you. Come on. He's with you, Brenda. Marilyn, he's with you. Scott, he's with you. He's with you. 
We are with you here at Christ Fellowship Everywhere. My name is Daniel, and this is Tyler, and we decided to stay out here because pre-service was so great with all the baptisms happening. You're going to get to experience some more baptisms here right before the message in the room, and uh, it's an incredible day. We're celebrating. Uh, Welcome to all of you that are joining. Uh, You might be traveling like Darcy, who normally attends Port St. Lucie campus. Uh, It's great to have you here with us. You might be all the way in Vermont. Vermont, like, or Connecticut, like Teresa on Facebook. Uh, welcome to Christ Fellowship Everywhere. Yeah, come on. We like to say show up and say hello. You are here. Yeah. So let us know where you're coming in from. Say hello. You can put an emoji in the chat, uh, whichever one you're feeling today. And then we talk about taking a step. Yeah. There's some great steps that you can take uh, this week here at Christ Fellowship. And one of those steps that you can take is called The Journey. It's happening next Sunday at 5 p.m. Yeah. on the 14th. It's a two week experience. We're gonna hear a little bit more about Christ Fellowship. You're gonna get to know uh, some of us and uh, we're gonna get to know some of you and talk about all the things that God's put inside of you. And it's really a great time to build community as well. And so next week, uh, Pastor Daniel and Kalisa will be kicking that off. And then the following week, I'll be uh, there with Pastor Jonathan. We'll get to talk and we'd love to meet you. So uh, you can follow the link or text info to 441 if you wanna get some of that information, but we'd love to see you. Yeah, it's a great first step, especially if you are new, maybe you joined us at Easter and you're kind of going, hey, what's this church all about? It's a great way to learn its history, some of the values and beliefs that we have here at Christ Fellowship and how you can get plugged in and connected. So we'd love to be able to have that conversation with you. Well, we we take some time each week to devote towards our giving. We we believe that we worship God, not just through singing and through our, our voice. We worship Him when we read, we worship Him when we pray. We also worship when we give. And uh, when you think about what happened last week with Easter, just everyone working together, all of the people, all of the man hours that went into it, uh, all of the resources that went into it, how many people experienced the love and the hope of Jesus because of last Easter. It, it reminds me of what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, where he talks about uh, the church being a body. He says, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up only one whole body. So it is is with the body of Christ. We all have a part to play, right? And and so when we all do that, when we serve, when we give, when we give of our lives to build this church, we're all working together. And it's just a beautiful picture of what it means to give and to sacrifice. And so uh, as we give today, I want us to kind of think about giving in that mindset. Hey, we all have a part to play. You can worship God this way as well. And we can continue to see life change, continue to see baptisms happen uh, through that. So Tyler, can you pray for our time of offering today? Yeah, pray with me. Father, we thank you for who you are. You are good. You are faithful. Uh, We thank you that everything that we have, you have given us. And so today we pause, we take a moment and we give back what you have given us, God. I pray that we would give with cheerful hearts, Lord. Uh, grateful, Lord, that we have something to give to you, Lord. God, I pray that you would bless uh, the gift and the giver today, Lord, that you would do more uh, with it than we could ever do with it on our own. God, I'm praying for my friends who are feeling stretched or uh, a little fearful. God, I pray that you would meet them right now, that you would put peace in their hearts, God, that you would uh, uh, you would help them take steps and trust you in this area, Lord, as we have learned to trust you. We just thank you for what you're doing and uh, we're excited to see uh, what the outcome is gonna be. We love you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, everybody said in the chat, Amen. amen and amen. Well, today, as we've yeah. been talking about, is Baptism Sunday. I got baptized in fourth grade, one of the best decisions of my life. And when you get baptized, you're saying, I'm going public with yeah. this faith. I've made a decision to follow Jesus. And so today we have the opportunity to celebrate with people. And you're going to see people go under the water. That's a symbol of, of the, their old life dying and yeah. their new life being resurrected. We just had Easter last week. And Jesus, he was put in a tomb. But how many of you know he did not stay stay there? there. He got up out of it and he is alive and because he lives, so can we. And so today you're gonna see that, we're gonna get to celebrate that. And then after service, you're gonna see people coming out these doors behind us, uh, right by that dunk tank. uh, And uh, it's just a big part you're celebrating. So uh, let's get ready. Let's join in and watch these baptisms as they unfold. Let's join. For Big Baptism Sunday and I've got my friend George who's getting baptized today. Tell us a little bit about why you're making this decision. Um, Prior to Jesus, my life was filled with addiction, desperation, and solitude. But Jesus was always there for me, even when I was not there for myself. And Jesus has given me something I just could not give myself, and that's unspeakable hope. Come on. Come on. I love it. I love it. Based on your confession of faith, it's my honor to baptize you today. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of the Spirit. And I got a friend He's closer than a brother And there is no judgment Oh, how he loves me I got a friend He is my strength He is my portion He's with me in the valley with me in the storm So let all my life Text me Hallelujah We are not I've got my friend Edie right here who's getting baptized today uh, with a whole line of co-workers, by the way. Thank you for telling your friends about that. But tell us a little bit about why you're getting baptized today. Um, last month on the month of prayer um, and fasting, uh, I came um, to church and prayed uh, for miracles on my life. And uh, I surrendered to God and gave my life to Jesus. Come on. Yeah. And based on that profession of faith, it's my honor to baptize you today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, and raised the new life. today. Amen. You can grab a seat. I want to welcome everybody joining us at all of our Christ Fellowship locations today. Everybody joining us online. We love you. Hey, how great is it to celebrate new life yeah. that we just celebrated? And last weekend, we celebrated a whole lot of new life, the new life of Jesus, celebrating the resurrection power. And listen to this. We had with us at all of our locations over 77,000 people I know, right? 77,000 people plus everybody that joined us online hearing about the good news of Jesus Christ. It's yeah, amazing. And as amazing as that number is, the number that we're most excited about is that there are 4,000 412 people that made decisions to follow Jesus. 
It was a weekend of life change. It was incredible. And all of those, the altars were flooded yeah. at all of our locations. People making a decision to, to give their entire life to Jesus. But there were also 860 of those decisions were our kids in kids ministry. Yeah. So there are generations that are being changed. Yeah. And we just want to thank all of our dream team. You guys showed up. We could not have done it without right. you. So thank you guys. And like you heard your campus pastor say, today is a baptism party that's taking place for every Everybody who made a decision last week to follow Jesus, and some of you, uh, you made a decision to follow Jesus years ago, but you've never been baptized as a believer. You might have been sprinkled as a kid, but you need to get dunked as a believer declaring who you are in Jesus. So I want to see you all in the baptisms after this service in Jesus' yeah. name. Amen? But today, today, today we are jumping into a brand new series, and this series is all about relationships. Because here is what we know, right? Life is all about relationships. We were created by a relational God for relationship. And the quality of our, of our life is dependent on the quality of our relationships. And we also know this is a series for everyone. Because no matter where you are or, or, or what you do, we all need some help with yeah. relationships, right? And yep. if you're here today and you think that your relationships don't have problems, you might be the problem, okay? So, so we're here for you if you're sitting next to that person. And we also know that at the end of this series that, that we can't guarantee that all of your relationship problems are gonna be solved, but what we can say is if you show up yep. and you lean in to what God is going to speak into your heart and into your life, your relationships are gonna get 50% better yeah. because you are you are 50% of every relationship that you're in. And so when you get stronger, your relationship gets stronger. When, when you get healthier, your relationships are gonna be healthy. And I love that the Word of God has so much to say about relationships. In Psalm 133, it gives us a picture of what, how God designed relationships. It says, behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell in unity. It goes on to say that it is there that the Lord commands a blessing. Right. When there's unity in relationships, he commands a blessing. But, but good and pleasant and blessed is not <laughs> always, those aren't always the words that we use to describe our relationship, yeah, they, right? Those, those maybe not be the words you would use to describe some of your relationships. Now, listen, as we were praying about this series, one of the things that God really began to speak to us about is how the family is under attack. That there is a spiritual attack against God's design as outlined in the word of God for the family unit. There is an attack against your marriage. There is an attack against your kids. There is an attack against brothers and sisters, parents against kids, kids against parents. All you gotta do is look around. And it is quite obvious that there is something spiritual uh, going on. And even if you aren't married, you think, well, I'm single. I don't have a family. Well, you are a sibling. You maybe are a child. You are a child. You've got siblings. You've got a family that you belong to. You've got relationships yeah. that are being pulled at, that are being attacked. That are, like there's this tug of war yeah. going on in our relationships. Yeah. Have you ever played that game tug of war? You know, maybe when you were a kid at camp, right? This is the place where, where friends become enemies. Uh -oh. Or maybe you played at, at a family reunion with, with one side of the family pulling against another side of the family. Did you know that, um, that a tug of war is actually an Olympic sport? Yeah. There are the world games of tug of war. This is where the competition is fierce and things can get ugly. And sometimes this is what our relationships feel like. It feels like there's a constant struggle. You've got wife against husband and parents against kids and kids against parent. And, and this is not where, where how it's supposed to be, right? This is what happens when we play tug of war to win, that things can get messy. Things get messy, especially when we think that the goal of our relationship, the tug of war in our relationship is to win. And, yeah. and this is not God's plan. This is not how he ordained relationships to be. A constant struggle, right? When because, we're pulling. Hey, when we're pulling against each other, if we think the goal is to win, when one of us goes down, the relationship loses. Yep. Because when one of us, when one of us falls down, or the, we get the relationship loses, it gets defeated. Yep. This is not God's plan that we would pull each other over to the other side. Right. He's got a better plan for us. So today we want to look at a scripture from the story of Nehemiah that we've looked at before, but we're going to look at it just a little bit differently. Nehemiah 
in the Old Testament was taken captive to Babylon, which is in modern day Iraq and Iran. And he had heard a report that the walls around his home city of Jerusalem had been in ruin. The gates were burned, the city was in ruin, the people were in ruin, the temple was destroyed and was not creating a place for people to come and worship God. So generations were growing up not knowing anything about God. And when Nehemiah heard this, it messed with him. And he said, I don't know what to do, but I've got to do something. And so he fasted and he prayed like we just did. And then he went to the king and got permission to go back to Jerusalem to actually begin to figure out how to rebuild the city. And when he got there and realized just how bad the thing was, he called everybody together, began working, but he said this in chapter four, verse 14, and this is the word of the Lord for us. Don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. You gotta fight for your families. You gotta fight for your kids. You gotta fight for your marriage. You gotta fight for your homes. And you may be sitting here, Todd, and say, you say, I don't, I don't, I don't have a son or a daughter. <laughs> but you are a son or a daughter, yeah, right? right? You're somebody's son or daughter, right? You may not have your own family yet the way you think of it, but you're in a family, you're a part of a, of a family, and can I tell you, as it goes with your family, so it goes with this family, yeah. God's family. So it's really important, Nehemiah is telling us that we gotta fight for each other, not against each other. We gotta get on the same side of the rope and pull together for our sons and for our daughters and for our homes and our families. If you've been around Christ Fellowship um, very long, you, you've probably heard Julie tell the story about when our son Jefferson was about five or six years old and we would take him to this place called Cheeseburger and More up in Jupiter. It was like this place to go get food, but it had this big indoor two-story maze that the kids could go through and go down the you know, slides and go through the maze and then into a ball pit that I actually think was where COVID started. Um, <laughs> just a thought. And, uh, and so we had Jefferson there and we were watching him pretty closely. He had some speech and language delay. So we might've been the helicopter parents, you know, watching every move, but there was this group of kids that he kept trying to engage with and, and play with. They were a little older than him and, and he would run up to them and they would just kind of run away and leave them behind. You know, as a parent, you're like, oh, all right. And then he would run up to them again and they would say something nasty. I could see it in their faces. It was just, you know, demonic. And, um, <laughs> And then one time, this, this one eight-year-old kid uh, kind of pushed Jefferson. It wasn't a full-out push, but it was enough of a nudge that, man, he fell over. And I'm like, oh, no, you didn't just like, do that to my boy. And Julie's like, I'm going to go get a manager. And she walks away, and I'm like, I don't need no manager. And so I <laughs> kick off my shoes, and I, I start climbing through the maze and through the slide and through the tubes that were made for small children. And I slide down into the ball pit and I see this kid and I, I just lay into him kindly, but I'm like, he just wants to have friends. He's just trying to make friends. Why are you treating him this way? And I'm, and the, and the little boy looks up at me and he goes, mister, um, you're not supposed to be in here. <laughs> and I was like, oh, all right. God bless you. And so I got out, but you need to know that what's coming after your family, what's coming after your kids is way more dangerous than an eight year old bully in a ball pit. Right. You have a real enemy that wants to tear you apart and tear your family apart and rob you of everything that you've got built up. And you got to know who your real enemy yeah. really is. If we're going to win this battle, we have to know who our enemy is so we know how to fight this enemy. It says in Ephesians 6, 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Your kid, your husband, your wife, your co they're not the enemy. We're not fighting against them, but against evil rulers and authorities of an unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. And that sounds a little bit spooky, but you need to know that there are spiritual forces working behind there the are. scenes trying to divide your home. There are. And, and they know that, that a house divided cannot stand. It will fall. You need to know that we have a real enemy that is trying to isolate you, trying to isolate you because the enemy knows that if he can isolate you, if he can isolate your kids, then he can take you out. Because the only battle that you can't win is the one that you're trying to fight on your own. And so this, this battle is a spiritual one, but I just wanna give a disclaimer. So this doesn't mean, you know, the next time you're in a fight with your husband or wife that you, you look at them and say, get thee behind me, Satan, right? <laughs> or we don't wanna call our kids, even though I think you might've said that to me one or twice. Oh, I would never. Or call our kids little demons or anything like that. This is, but, but if you can see the person 
that's not the problem. Yeah. If you, if you can see the person, they're not the problem. Notice the first thing that, that Nehemiah says in the scripture. He says, don't be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious. And I think a lot of times when we talk about the spiritual battle that we are in as believers, it can be intimidating. That we think that, that fighting demons and dark forces, that's for the spiritual elite, right? Like the green beret of Christianity, right? That you have to have like some kind of special training. But, but what Nehemiah, Nehemiah wasn't talking to priests and spiritual giants. He was talking to moms and dads and brothers and sisters, ordinary people. And what, what he was saying is, hey, remember Remember, remember that your God, yep. your God who is fighting for you, he is great and awesome. And you don't need to be intimidated by the enemy, but you do need to be prepared and yep. equipped for the battle that you're getting ready to step in. You're, you're not a victim of this unseen enemy. No. You are not a hostage to the relationship problems that you might be walking through. And as a believer, the same power that raised Jesus up from the grave it, yep. it lives in us. We're actually the temples of the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And Jesus says this in Matthew. He says, that, he says in Matthew that, that God gave him all authority. And yep. then in Luke um, 9, 10, 19, he says this. He says, the same authority that I have been given by God, I have given you. I am giving now to you that you would have all authority, all authority. over all the power of the enemy. Yep. The authority that he has given us, the authority that God gave him, he now gives to you yeah. to fight the yeah. battle we're in. Yeah. So which makes me think that sometimes we might be praying, God, protect my family. God, protect my marriage. God, protect my kids. And he's probably going, that's your job. Yeah. I've given you power. I've given you authority by my spirit to fight the battle that you're in right now. So the first thing that we've got to do in this, in this battle that we're in is number one, you've got to take authority. You've been given authority by Jesus. You need to take authority over your enemy. So when yeah. you see the enemy trying to destroy your relationships, trying to destroy your marriage or your family or something with your kids or something that you're in, recognize it for what it is, right? And then take authority. Right. So it might be a spirit of unforgiveness. Could be a spirit of hurt or offense and people are starting to withdraw could be a, a spirit of rebellion that you sense coming from your kids. It could be um, a, a, an angry, uh, contentious, yep. eh, everybody fussing and cussing in your household at each other, right? You need to understand, no, 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 I'm not gonna let that happen. I'm gonna take authority over it. Take authority over any spirit, listen to me, that is not the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is peace and joy and love and patience and purity, that is the spirit of Christ. So when you see something that doesn't look like Jesus, doesn't sound like Jesus, it is an anti-Christ spirit. Right. Take control, take authority, go, no, no, we're not gonna let that happen. Devil, you're not gonna get in my household. Devil, you're not getting in my marriage. Devil, you cannot have my kids. We do not want that spirit in our home or in our family or in our marriage. We're not letting that reside here. We're taking authority in the spirit realm of what's trying to attack our family. Yeah. We're not gonna let it in, right? And did you know that you can actually bring a different spirit right. into, you can bring the spirit of Christ into the conflict yeah. by the words you say and the words you don't say. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. I mean, right? Just by, by the way you respond or the way you don't respond, it can actually diffuse the situation and not allow the wrong spirit yeah. to reside. When, when we talk about authority, we have to know where this authority comes from. It comes from Jesus, and the authority that he gives us, it, it's not, he, there's no authority in our feelings. Right. There's no authority in our pi opinions. The authority he gives us is, is the spirit of God in us and the authority that he gives us is from the word of God. Yep. And the word of God actually equips us to know how to walk in authority, yep. to exercise that authority, right. to, to, to give the word of God authority in our home actually gives, brings a blessing into our home. And in Ephesians 6, after that verse I just read, um, it goes on. The apostle Paul 
Paul goes on to tell them how to get ready for the battle that you're in. And in, in, the, early, um, in the early church in, in Ephesus, it would have been very common for them to see Roman soldiers walking around. And he wanted to paint a picture so that they would know what they need to do to fight this battle. And, and he starts unpacking how we need to equip ourselves with the armor of God. And he, he says that we need to put on the helmet of salvation, right? We have to believe God is who he says he is. Then we raise up the shield of faith. We believe that God will do what he says he will do. But the very first piece of armor that, that Paul instructs us to put on is something called the belt of truth. And, and this belt of truth is the truth that comes from God's word. And the reason this piece of armor, just like the Roman soldier, had to go on first, uh, the belt of truth, that this wasn't an optional accessory. Like sometimes we forget to put on our belt, right? It's not an optional accessory. It was actually, you think about more like what the UPS guy wears, you know, that lumbar support, that huge belt, or what the, the heavy weight lifters wear when they're, when they're lifting a heavy weight. It's, it's, this, it's, a, it's something that goes on to be able to support the core. Because when the core was supported, that there, there's strength, yep. that they could stand firm. And, and when the core was supported, that was actually the piece of armor that had to go on first because every other piece of armor that went on was attached to the belt of truth, right? And so, so w w if, the, if the core got weak, they would, they would get weak in battle. They would lose stamina. If the core was weak, they would, they would be susceptible to injury. It's the same thing with, with the belt of truth. The belt of truth is, is our core beliefs, the truth that comes from God's word that keep us strong, that, that actually give us guidance and direction and stamina for the battle that we're in. This core belief system, is, it, this, th this is what gives us, the core beliefs in God's word, this is what gives us authority. See, like I said, our, our opinions and our feelings, they don't carry authority, but his word, we can count on it to guide us. This, yep. in, in an ever-shifting culture, yep. there is a standard that does not change. That's right. And I love in Psalm 119, 105, it says his word, this word is going to be the lamp to our feet. It's going to be the light to our path. And it says, by your words, I can see where I'm going. They throw a beam of light in my dark path. His word is going to guide us through the battles that we're in. And God's word has so much to say about relationships. And when we give his word authority... It actually strengthens and brings a blessing right. in our relationship. When we, when we walk in, in, in authority, under the authority of God's word in our relationships, we go on the offense. And Romans 12.10 says that we're going to outdo each other with honor. And when kids are honoring parents and husbands and wives are honoring each other, yeah. there, there is a, a blessing that comes with There's an authority. It creates the space and place for an atmosphere for God to do his greatest work. When we forgive what, what feels like is the unforgivable, th this is the place where, where we actually partner with God to put something back together that the enemy tried to tear apart. Yeah, yeah. I think the problem is we've been given this authority, but without even knowing it, sometimes we give that authority away to other things. We let other, other ideas, other philosophies, other people set the tone in our household or in our family relationships without even knowing it. We have been counseled by culture. Yeah. And all you got to do is turn on the TV and look at what's trending in Netflix or Hulu or whatever you watch. And you will see that, that it, is, it is an anti-Christ spirit. It is something that is different than what the Word of God teaches. They normalize rebellion, kids against parents, right? They redefine the family unit and what it's supposed to look like and what it's supposed to be. They, uh, sexualization is like, that's just normal. Everybody does that. They always portray the dads as dweebs, don't they? It was like, Wah, loser. And then, you know, the mom's the superhero that comes in and has to save the day and save the family. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not opposed to strong women. I'm married to one. But there's room for strong women, strong men in a Come family, on. right? So that we can both be who we're called to be in a family unit. The millennial generation has been labeled the friends generation because they were raised on that sitcom friends. They were counseled by culture in their relationships, by the way they watched it. They, they, it counseled them. They let Joey and Chandler and Phoebe and Rachel counsel them on what relationships were supposed to look like and how you would do it. I, we read an article this week that said, uh, of course, the, the series, those main characters had 138 different sexual relationships with different people, with no consequences, no. 
No negative side effects physically or psychologically. No, it's all good. Can I tell you, it's all a lie. But we've been counseled by culture. When it comes to sexual relationships, um, our culture has been counseled by pornography. Many people have given pornography authority in their life to counsel them in this area that is a gift from God. And because of it, identities are being robbed. Futures are being destroyed. Like marriages are falling apart because this is not an expression of sex. It is actually an exaggeration of sex and a misrepresentation of a very beautiful gift that God wants to give us in our marriage between a man and a woman. There is a beauty in that. But we have, again, we've given away authority to whatever the world thinks, whatever the world says, I guess that's okay. We've got to take back the authority. Yeah, we have to, we have to take authority, but we also, um, in, to fight this battle that we're in, we have to take responsibility, yes, right? Each one of us has to take responsibility. To win the battle for our relationships, it means we take the responsibility for, to, to build back what's been torn down, yes. right? Um, Nehemiah didn't wait for someone else to come along to rebuild the walls that somebody else had torn down. Right. He took responsibility. Yes, he and, and he specifically, he, be, he took responsibility by challenging, by challenging um, those that were the people of God to, to fight specifically for, for their sons and daughters and their wives, the people that were, that were closest to them to fight, to, to be able to, to build back after, after the problems, to fight against the problems that he didn't even create. This was a generational thing, right? And so when he challenged them, he, he, was, he was saying, fight for those that are closest to you. And, and one of the ways that, that we feel like the enemy, not feel like, we know, <laughs> that the enemy has been attacking relationships and attacking his people is, in, is, 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 is this targeted spiritual attack against marriage. Yes. This, this institution, this spiritual institution that, that God created, yeah. there is a, an all-out attack on your marriage, yep. Yep. on your future marriage, yep. and if you don't get it, if you don't see this, you're going to wonder why this is so hard, and you're going to want to give up really, really easy. But you have to go back to, to, the, to the core, the, 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 the truth of God's word, to see what his word says about it. There's a, there's a spiritual attack against your marriage and there's a spiritual attack against marriage. This, this sacred place that, that God created, this God-ordained plan that was actually the answer to the very first problem in Genesis. The very first problem was a sin. When, when God created Adam, he saw that it wasn't good to be alone. The first thing that wasn't good was isolation. Yeah. And so God created Eve to be an answer to that problem. From the very beginning, it was, it was his plan. In, in, um, in Jesus validated, right? He validated and valued marriage in Matthew 19 when he said, from the very beginning, it was God's plan for a man and a woman to become one flesh. And I know this isn't very popular to say, but his plan for marriage and the way that he defines it, the authority of God's word says it is a man and a woman, one man and one woman coming together to become one flesh. This is what God blesses. Marriage is this gift that, that gives a, a lifelong partner. It doesn't mean that if you're not married that, that you're not blessed and you don't have God's favor, but, but marriage was created to be a gift that we can experience joy and, and partnership. It's the place that, that you can have children and, 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 and see generations to come. It's also the only place that God says that, that sexual relationships are gonna be blessed. Mm -hmm. This is his plan within, right. within the boundaries of marriage that he's created something so beautiful. And I know that, that sometimes our feelings and our opinions, we wrestle with this. But whenever our, there, there's gonna always be times when our feelings and opinions are gonna be at odds with our faith. Yep. And when that happens, we have to go back to the unchanging authority of God's word That's and right. give it authority over our feelings, yes. over our opinions, yep. so that we can stand firm and strong in the battle. Because if we don't know the battle we're fighting for, we're gonna lose every That's time. Right. That's right, amen. Paul talks about the purpose of marriage uh, is actually a picture uh, of our relationship with God. So if the purpose of marriage is a picture of our relationship with God, no wonder the enemy's trying to tear it down and attack it. In fact, a lot of people today believe that, that marriage uh, is viewed as this commitment that can be easily reversed if it doesn't work out. Or they view it as something completely outdated and antiquated. 
But the problem is any time that we devalue or degrade something that God calls sacred in his scripture, there is personal consequences and there are cost, cultural consequences that we all deal with. And so we, we have to recognize when we give the authority that we've been given by God, when we give that away to public opinion, popular opinion, Netflix opinion, when we give it away to what the government says is okay or right, maybe this year, maybe this decade, maybe not, when we give it away uh, to our own feelings, what we actually do is we leave our, our lives and our families unprotected because the walls are down and we are vulnerable. Yeah, you know, um, I was reading an article this week in the Los Angeles Times. Now, this is a secular article. And they were describing Gen Alpha. And if you don't know, Gen Alpha are all the kids that have been born from 2010 to 2024. That's, that's um, birth to age 14. And this is how they describe them. They said that they are wild, illiterate, and doomed. A whole generation of failure. What? What? Not on our watch. <laughs> This is not our kids, right? We are gonna speak a better word over our kids, over our generation. See, there's been a, a cultural impact that, that has taken them, trying to take them down, but our kids, yep. our sons and our daughters, yep. they are fearfully and wonderfully yep. made. Yep. They have been created a masterpiece with purpose and potential. They, they can stand strong and know their identity. They don't have to question it. They can know yep. their identity because of the truth of God's word. Parents, we have to speak a better word over our kids, right. over our sons and our daughters. That's our responsibility. Right, right. We have to disciple them in God's purpose and his plan. And church, we have to speak a better word over our spiritual sons and daughters. We have to, we have to let them know that, that we are standing on their side of the rope, yep. that, that we are pulling for them. And we're gonna pull for them. We're gonna pull against anything anything that is going to try to pull them away, yep. try to pull them away from what God's plan and his purposes over our lives. See, Nehemiah reminds us that we have to fight. This is going to be a fight, but we're going to fight with them. We're going to pull yeah. for them. Yep. We're going to fight for their joy. We're going to fight for their hope. Yep. We're going to fight for their purpose. Yep. We're going to fight for their calling. It says fight for your sons, your daughters, your wives. Amen. We got to. Yeah. We got, and we have to take responsibility. That's yeah. what we're talking about, taking responsibility. Parents, I think that one of, the, one of the number one ways you take responsibility is you lead by example. That you go, okay, I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to follow God. My love for God is going to be an example for my children. It says this in Proverbs 14, 26, whoever fears the Lord has a secure fortress and for their children, it will be a refuge. So when you fear the Lord, when you honor the Lord, you actually create a refuge for your children, a safe place where the enemy and the enemy schemes can't get to them. Now I'm not talking about being perfect. None of you are going to be mother Teresa and neither am I. Thank God. Right. But when we put God in that first place and we are pursuing him with all of our heart, it actually creates safety for our yeah. kids. Yeah, you know, um, some of this, when we equip our kids, some of it's caught by leading by example, but a lot of it does need to be taught. That's right. We, we, have, to, we, we have to take responsibility for equipping our kids and, and equipping them to fight the battle that they are facing every single day. Our, our kids are facing things we never had to face, right? And I know, I, I get it. It can be scary and intimidating to, to raise kids in this generation. But can I remind you that, that when, when Jefferson was in the ball pit, like he was no match. Five-year-old Jefferson was no match for those eight-year-old bullies. But those eight-year-old bullies were no match for Jefferson's hey. dad, right? And when, when we stand next to our kids, when we stand next to our kids, we give them a courage and a confidence that they cannot gain right. on their own. Right. And you know, research shows and study after study that, that parents, they don't believe that they have very much influence in their lives. But when, they, when, they re, when the research polled kids, time and time, overwhelmingly, yep. That, that students and teenagers said that the number one influence in their lives when it came to, to relationships, when it came to spirituality, when it came to moral decisions, were their parents. See, they want us 
to lead them. They're, 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 we are their highest influence by far. And when we lead them, that doesn't mean in a legalistic, heavy-handed kind of way. You just gotta look how Jesus did it when he discipled his followers. He was 100% truth. Our kids need to know that there are commands in God's word that are, that are there. They are not a burden, but they are there to bless you, yes. to, to give you life, to give you freedom. Right. But they also need to know that this is a place of grace. 100% truth, 100% grace, that when you make mistakes, this is gonna be the safest place yes. to have the hardest conversation. Right. Our home's gonna be a safe place. And this is what Jesus did, he created, like think about, he, he created an atmosphere where, where questions could be asked right. and conversations could be had. So this is the deal, parents, is that if the, you don't take the responsibility to disciple your kids, there's a line of people waiting to disciple them. Culture is waiting, the, 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 the curriculum in their school is waiting, Yep. Their friends are waiting. If we don't take responsibility, someone is ready to take your place. And, and we, wanna, we wanna tell you, parents, it's your number one job, but we're here to help you. You're not pulling a loan for your kids. There's, there's prayers that you're praying for your kids, and God's already answered the prayer. Oh, God, please help my, protect my teenager. Surround them with godly people. And he's like, hello, is this on? Yeah. I got the church I got student ministries every Wednesday night. I got Kids University every Wednesday night. You just get your kids there. Just take responsibility to get them there. Take responsibility to make that a priority. You're, you're praying for us, oh God, help, my, help our marriage. Oh, we're struggling, we're struggling, Lord. Oh God, please speak, please speak. He's like, yeah, yeah. Did you hear about the marriage class they got going on at church? How about that re-engage? How about that ministry for married people? Why don't you just go take responsibility? When we take responsibility, we can begin to build back what has been torn down. Yeah, we want to be your greatest allies, right? Because when we take authority and we take responsibility, we're going to take back some territory. That's right. Just like Nehemiah, think about it, he built back the walls that had been torn down for generations. He reestablished a place for God. The temple began to function again. People began to know God and walk with God. Families had safety and security. He took back some lost territory. And we believe that God is going to help you take back some lost ground. Some things that the enemy has torn down, he wants you to reclaim that territory. Yeah. Yeah, so we wanna help you win, right? This, this tug of war that you're in. And so we have a challenge, and, and the challenge is that we, we get on the same side of the rope, right? And, and the, the challenge really is to, to look and see what's pulling on the other side of the rope in your relationships. The, the unseen enemy. Is it some attitudes that, that have been allowed to fester? Has it been angry words or, or critical words? Or, or maybe it's some things that have come into your home through entertainment or, or through, um, through, through social media that, that you know are in direct opposition of the Spirit of God. And, it, and even if you're single, some of you young adults and you college students, you can take responsibility. Yeah. Look at what's at the other end of the rope. What's, what's causing some of the breakdown? And, and you know, I remember, Todd, you walked into an intern house several years ago, and in our intern house, there was a little sign on the, on the television, and it said, I will put no vile thing before my eyes. Psalm 101. Psalm 101. Every time they would turn on the TV, that was there. And I think that's a really good thing, maybe not just the TV, but on our computer screens, on our telephones, yeah. that maybe put something like, my calling is too great to compromise. Yeah. My, the plan God has for me, my purpose, is, is, too, is too important to, to be robbed of what God has for me. Yeah. Identify what's on the other side of the rope and go to battle against yeah. it. You can take back territory just by praying together as a family. As a couple, pray together. When you pray together, you're actually pulling together. You're on the same side of it. And it doesn't have to be a 30 minute prayer meeting. It can just be a quick prayer before you head out for the day. My mom would pray over us as we were waiting for the school bus or on the way to school, we would pray. You can, you can have a, a Bible study. Maybe you're like, well, Todd, we don't know how to do that. Well, you can take a scripture and actually just put it on the refrigerator and say, hey, everybody, that's our family verse for the week. What are you doing when you do that? Every time you pray together, every time you read the word together or proclaim it, you're inviting the spirit of Christ into the home, into the relationship, and brick by brick, stone by stone, you're building a place where God is quite at home. So every one of us can do this this week. Every one of us can take back the authority given to us by God. We're not gonna let the enemy destroy our family or our relationships. Right. Every one of us can take responsibility. What is my part, my responsibility to build back one buck at a time, one buck at one, one prayer at a time, one scripture at a time. And third, we're gonna take back some territory this week. 
some places that we thought are too far gone. Maybe it's been years and that relationship hasn't been what it needs to be. You know what? Nehemiah was able to rebuild something that had been torn down for decades and built it back to create a whole different environment. You can do that as well. By the way, this is just week one of a series. If you weigh in every week, if you lean in every week, and next week we got some special for you, you're gonna be back. I believe week by week it's gonna build and you're gonna walk away from this series going, I know what it means to stand up against the enemy's attack against my family. I wanna pray two prayers today. First, I wanna pray for all the relationships in this room. And if you're sitting by your spouse, I want you to grab their hand as we pray today. We're gonna pray for families. We're gonna pray for healing. We're gonna pray for restoration. Second prayer I wanna pray for those of you that need to get your relationship with Jesus right. That one relationships, relationship with him affects every other relationship you have. And if that's not right, get that right first. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father God, I thank you that your word gives us the answer to every Thing that we need. In this word, there is life and clarity and healing and direction. So Lord, right now we pray for all the relationships. Uh, God, in the room, those joining online, we just pray for healing in homes and in marriages and between kids and their parents and parents and their children and spouse to spouse. God, we just pray that you would restore what the enemy has torn apart and help us to fight for it. God, help us to get a fight on us, that we're not gonna back down. We're gonna work for this thing. We're gonna take responsibility. We're gonna take authority and we're gonna see you rebuild with us together new things in our families. As we continue to pray with every head bowed, if you're here today and you would say, Todd, I know I need to get my relationship with Jesus right because that's gonna change all my other relationships. My friend, I wanna lead you in a prayer that's gonna help you uh, feel new on the inside, experience the newness of God's grace and love and help you step in power in everything he has for you. And if you'd like me to include you in that prayer, right where you're seated, would you just raise your hand and say, Todd, that's me? Yeah, hold them up high all across the rooms today. Let's all pray this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and I will follow you the best I know how for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for everybody that made that decision. Amen. And if that's you and your best first step is to get your relationship right with Jesus. We want to be able to walk with you and answer any questions you may have. You can text the word yes to 441441. Our hosts are going to put a link in the chat there. That way we can answer any questions. We have a a free ebook we want to get you that will just walk you through the next seven days of how to make sense of what does it mean to follow Jesus. But what an incredible message. What a great way for us to be able to take a step forward in in our relationships. Yeah. If you're looking for some more next steps that are coming up, uh, here at the church, you can text INFO to 441441. You get all the resources, all the things happening, like the journey experience happening yeah. next Sunday on the 14th, Pastor Daniel and Kalisa. But also next Sunday, we have a very special guest named Ryan Leak yeah. coming to bring the word. So share the service with somebody ahead of time next week. Uh, to, to make sure you're ready for that, but it's, it's gonna be exciting. It's baptism today. People are about baptisms, to get dumped. Right as service is getting out, you're gonna start to see some people come out here and it's a big party. It's so fun yep. out here. Uh, we, we have an MC, Pastor Joy, our middle school pastor MCs and yep. gets everyone fired up and you'll see people gathered around, you know, praying with them, cheering yep. people as they get baptized. And so we're ready for another wave of people coming out as service ends. But before we let you go, I want to say, thank you and happy birthday to the man on the other side of the camera. Steven, can you come over here, please? Come on in. Drum roll you, you, you should have known. Hey, this is Steven Long. He does all of our communication. So many of you have connected with him. You see him in the chat. He leads all of our dream team. Oh, yeah. He does all the journey stuff oh, and all the communication that. with that. Yesterday was his 25th birthday. So no quarter life crisis is here. Hey, happy birthday. Thank you so much for everything that you do and CF Everywhere family, they love you. All right. Hey, thank you so look, look much. Here for look at Happy that. Birthday, Everyone's Steven. cheering for Steven. Happy birthday, man. Thank you. All right. Hey, I hope you had a great day. Share this service with someone. We'll see you back next week. Take care.